I hope you're feeling particularly rich today in this cost of living crisis because today we're going to check out Samsung's savings drain and bendy blower, the Galaxy Z Fold 5. It's on sale from August the 11th from £1749, so it's just as hazardous to your wallet as that Pixel Fold bugger. As usual though, Samsung is offering some pretty good pre-order deals to take some of the sting out of it. Details down in the video description. But for now, let's whip the Galaxy Z Fold 5 out of the box and compare it to Google's Pixel Fold to see which almighty mega expensive bendy blow might be best for you. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you get stuffed inside of this big square box besides the Galaxy Z Fold 5? Well, if this unboxing video was literally just me checking out the box, it would be over pretty damn quick. Because this right here is all that you get. A quick start guide, a Type-C USB cable and a pokey pin thing to get your SIM in there. The end, please do poke subscribe, etc, etc. So here we have it, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Looking remarkably similar to the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and 3, etc. That is, until you lie the thing on its back and realise that with that brand new flex hinge there is absolutely zero gap at long last. That's right, the god awful gap is gone, it's considerably thinner than before at 13.4 mils. Although yes, that is still chunkier than Google's Pixel Fold. It's not a huge amount of difference, the Pixel Fold is still pretty girthy. Let's face it, they're both pocket fillers. The Z Fold 5 now weighs 253 grams, that's 10 grams lighter than last year's model. In other words, it's still heavy as shit. Although not quite as burdensome to hold as the Pixel Fold, which is a 283 gram brick. Bur burdensome? That's definitely not a word. More coffee, certainly needed. Your colour options for the Galaxy Z Fold 5 are basically white, black or this fresh new icy blue hero colour. In comparison, there's no colourful options for the Pixel Fold, basically whitish or blackish are your options. And Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 5 should be one tough more for as well. You've got the latest Gorilla Glass Victus front and back as well. And then sandwiched in between those plates of glass around the edge and, and for that hinge, you've got Samsung's Armour Aluminium. That Victus 2, nice and tough, seems a lot more scratch resistant than the original Victus. And that armor aluminium also pretty good at resistant scratches and dents. Whereas here on the Pixel Fold, unfortunately, is the original Victus, so I have noticed a few little light scratches cropping up on that display. But fair and far worse is that camera bump, which is absolutely scratched to buggery. And good news if you like to be places which are quite moist, because both the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and the Pixel Fold are IPX8 water resistant. You can take them in the shower, the bath, out in the piss and rain if you live here in the UK. Just towel them off, they should be absolutely fine. So a slight but very worthy evolution of the design for the Z Fold 5, but when it comes to the display tech, well, there's been next to zero changes. It's once again a 6.2 inch external display, Samsung's dynamic AMOLED 2X tech as before, and that's compared with the more compact 5.8 inch OLED display here on the Pixel Fold. And I've got to say, personally, I prefer the Pixel Fold's external display, that more squat aspect ratio makes it much more usable one-handed than this weird sausage screen on the Z Fold 5. Especially, God forbid, if you're trying to type something. I have tiny wee goblin hands and even I struggle with this thing. And as for reaching anything in the top half of that screen, I've got no hope unless, of course, I employ the useful one-handed mode. Of course, this display is fully functional. You can basically run any app you want on this thing, unlike the Flip 5. And because you've got that dynamic AMOLED tech as always, you've got those bright poppy colours. You've got that really sharp, strong contrast, great for HDR content, wide viewing angles, and it's nice and bright as well. So it is good for your cinematic content. It means you've got absolutely zero letterboxing. In fact, when you crop in, you actually slice a bit off the top and the bottom of the picture, even when it's that 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Whereas with the Pixel Fold, there's certainly less cropping involved when you do go full screen. It's better suited to anime, TV shows, things which don't have that stretched aspect ratio. The refresh rate here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5 ranges from 48 all the way up to 120 hertz. Whereas on the Pixel Fold, it seems to range just from 60 to 120 as standard. Now, prizing these buggers open is definitely a two-handed affair. Both of these foldable phones boast a mighty 7.6 inch internal screen. Once again, that dynamic AMOLED 2X shenanigans here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5 versus OLEDtech here on the Pixel Fold. And this time it's a very similar aspect ratio, but only when you tip the Z Fold 5 on its side like so. 
Now the Z Fold 5 spots a 2176 by 1812 pixel resolution. So again, those visuals nice and sharp. And the Pixel Fold's resolution almost identical. You got HDR10 streaming support on the likes of Netflix on both of these bendy blowers. The colors do seem slightly richer and bolder on the Galaxy Z Fold 5's display compared with the Pixel Fold. That's possibly because it's a brighter panel. Now reaching 1,750 nits, beating the 1,450 nits of the Pixel Fold. So while both of these phones sport a glossy screen protector, which is pretty bad at reflecting light, I have found that the Z Fold 5 so far seems to be better suited to outdoors use when you've got that sun beaming down on you, thanks to that brighter panel. And of course, those bezels are a lot teenier here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5 compared with the Pixel Fold, which has big, chunky morphos. Of course, those chunky bezels do have their advantage. It means the Pixel Fold is very comfortable to clutch one-handed in a variety of styles. And it also means that the internal camera can be housed in that top bezel rather than intruding on the display in the form of a cutout orifice thing. But while Samsung doesn't have the benefit of that bezel space to repeat that trick, it has very cunningly squirreled away the selfie camera underneath the display. Exactly the same as last year's model. It's right here. It's very tricky to see. They've done a bloody good job of it. You can only really notice it when you tilt the phone at quite a sharp angle. And the refresh rate here on the Z Fold 5's internal screen ranges all the way from 1 hertz up to 120 hertz. So it can be super fluid when you need it. And when you're just viewing static images, it can drop right the way down to preserve battery life. Whereas on the Pixel Fold, it just seems to range from 60 to 120 again. And while the Pixel Fold's display doesn't quite open to a full 180 degrees, that's not a problem for the Z Fold 5. However, both phones do rattle about the place when you do lie them on a desk because of the bloody camera bumps. As for the slightly awkward issue of that screen crease, well, yes, it is pretty noticeable here on the Z Fold 5, just as it was on the Z Fold 4, and just as it is on the Pixel Fold. You can't really notice that crease when you are staring head on at the display. Not unless, of course, you get some light shining off it, in which case, yeah, pretty obvious. And yes, both phones feature a stiff hinge, so you can prop up these blowers like so to enjoy a bit of YouTube, a bit of Skype and whatever you fancy hands-free. Otherwise, you can see there, once again, you've got a more cinematic aspect ratio here on the Z Fold 5 because it folds the other way. Whereas here on the Pixel Fold, it is a more boxy display, so better suited to the likes of YouTube, TV shows, yada yada. So if you like to do a bit of reason, I certainly prefer the Pixel Fold experience because it feels more like a book. That crease running right down the middle. As here on the Z Fold 5, unfortunately, that crease is going the wrong way. And if you hold it this way up, it's just one page at a time, which to be fair, does give you a bigger view, so everything's a bit clearer if your eyesight ain't quite what it used to be. And both of these bendy phones spot a stereo speaker setup when you're watching content on that cover screen. Let's just boost up the volume, see what we're dealing with here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5. And as for that internal selfie camera, well, this once again appears to be recycled hardware. And I've got to say, I am more enamored with the stereo speaker setup on the Pixel Fold compared with the Z Fold 5. The Sammy Blower is just as loud as the Pixel Fold, really, but that output seems a little bit more tinny, not quite as beefy. Bass isn't as strong. That said, at least when you're watching content on the internal screen, the speakers are left and right positioned again. Whereas here on the Pixel Fold, you have to watch things this way around if you want those left and right channels. We should have a good bit of Dolby Atmos action here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5. No headphone jack on either phone, of course, pretty standard for 2023, but the Bluetooth streaming has been absolutely flawless on both. Now, both the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and the Pixel Fold are running Android 13. You've got five years of guaranteed software updates with them, but the software does look and feel very different on both of these blowers. Because, of course, Samsung has added its very own quirks in here. And while the Pixel Fold mirrors the cover screen here on the internal display, you do actually have the option of doing that here on the Z Fold 5. So overall, it is a wee bit more customizable. I love how you can tell that Google search bar to do one if you don't want it taking up a massive chunk of your desktops. You've also got more personalization options when it comes to the likes of the always-on display. And the Z Fold 5 just handles apps better on this internal display as well, which is kind of crazy when Google does the software and the hardware on the Pixel Fold. So, for instance, check out Twitter or X or whatever that Musk fella fancies calling it this week. Here on the Z Fold 5, it just stretches to fill the entire display, whereas here on the Pixel Fold, as you can see there, it only takes up a wee bit of that screen space. So yeah, I certainly prefer how it operates here on the Z Fold 5. And I also really like how that taskbar is always visible there at the bottom by default. 
Whereas here on the Pixel Fold, you have to kind of awkwardly drag it up, which is a gesture that can very easily go wrong until you finally get the hang of it. You can, of course, disable this taskbar if you want to. I love it, so I'm going to keep it right there. And this can now show up to four of your most recent apps here on the right hand side. So it's really great for that quick and easy multitasking. And as before, you can get it away out of sight if you suddenly don't want to be staring at it. The Z Fold 5 is also a more powerful multitasker and that you can get three apps side by side on that display. It's dead easy to swap them about as well. Just drag and drop from that taskbar. Nice and easy and it all seems to work super fluidly. Whereas here on the Pixel Fold, you do sadly max out at just the two apps. And I find with the Galaxy Z Fold 5, you can jump more easily into your favorite app pairings when you need to. With the split screen multitasking, you can quickly and easily copy text, pictures, etc. between two apps side by side on either of these blowers. And yes, that old fan favorite flex mode is once again back in action. And yes, you do have S Pen support here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5, but once again, no orifice to squirrel away your stylus. You will need to get the official Samsung case, which has the little groove in the back, which you can slot it into. Otherwise, just bung it somewhere else, I guess. So let's continue with a shifty at the performance. And the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, very popular chipset for flagship premium smartphones in 2023. Whereas the Pixel Fold goes with Google's own Tensor G2, which you'll only find in Google's own Pixel handsets. And both of these foldable phones are stuffed full of 12 gigs of tasty RAM. Now both the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 and the Pixel Fold can happily handle multitasking, split screen and, and a good bit of gaming as well. Although if you are a gamer, you'll probably want to lean more towards the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. That Tensor G2 chipset does tend to get a wee bit toasty under pressure. And certainly if you're playing more demanding games like Genshin Impact on those higher graphic settings, you will notice that the frame rate doesn't stay quite as stable, not quite as fluid as what you get with Samsung's blower. There are regular dips in that frame rate, which can take you out of the gameplay. But as long as you just drop down the graphics a wee bit, you will get a more fluid, smoother gaming experience. Whereas here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5, no surprise that that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 capably deals with even Genshin on those maxed out settings. You'll notice the odd teeny weeny little judder here and there, but honestly, that gameplay is smooth and satisfying. Helped along by the fact that you've now got a 38% larger vapor chamber versus the older Z Fold 4. So this helps this almighty smartphone to stay cool even when you are Genshin in for a good hour, two hours, however long you fancy. But certainly when you are gaming on the likes of Genshin Impact, you'll want to stick with Samsung's massive internal display because everyone looks a wee bit squashed on that cover screen. And suddenly the gaming mode and gaming features in general are a bit basic on both of these blowers, but hey ho. As for the connectivity, you've got full 5G support, of course, naturally. Although I do find the Pixel Fold occasionally loses connectivity in areas where I still have a signal on the Z Fold 5. You do have support for physical sims as well as e-sims on both the Pixel Fold and the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Now for the battery tech, Samsung sadly hasn't upgraded the capacity for the Z Fold 5. It's once again 4,400 milliamp hours. That is versus the 4,800 milliamp hour capacity cells stuffed inside of the Pixel Fold. Now the Pixel Fold, I can just about make it through a pretty long, pretty intensive day without having to give it a bit of a power up halfway through that day. The Galaxy Z Fold 5, certainly the battery life seems to be about on par right now. Similar sort of drain when you're streaming video, when you're gaming on Genshin Impact, whatever else. I think that's certainly helped along by the fact that that Snapdragon chipset is super energy efficient and certainly doesn't heat up as much as the tensors stuffed inside of the Pixel. But stay tuned for my in-depth Galaxy Z Fold 5 review. I'll be fully testing out this smartphone. My sims are already slapped inside of it, in fact. So come back in a couple of weeks, should hopefully have a definitive verdict on that battery life. And you've also got Samsung's super fast charging here on the Galaxy Z Fold 5. It's certainly quicker than the Pixel when you plug it in, but that's kind of like seeing a clapped out Ford Pinto is faster than a small child on a broken scooter. So neither really excels in that area, but you do at least have wireless charging support on both, which is nice. So let's finish up this lovely unboxing and Pixel Fold comparison with a squint at the Galaxy Z Fold 5's camera tech. And if you're at all familiar with last year's Z Fold 4, you'll probably get a severe case of deja frickin' vu. Because what you've got here is once again a 50 megapixel primary shooter with optical image stabilization, backed by a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 10 megapixel telephoto shooter with three times optical zoom and OIS again. 
Here on the Pixel Fold, you've got the same combination of primary sensor, ultra wide angle shooter, and telephoto snapper. They are different sensors, but it is a very similar megapixel count. And both are pretty good at simple point and shoot photography, if that's what you fancy. But here on Samsung's Blow, you've got lots of extra bonus camera modes, whereas you just get the more basic stuff like portrait mode and a good bit of night modes here on the Pixel. But sticking with the auto mode, I found that the Pixel Fold in general produced more natural hues. Samsung really likes to produce bolder tones or occasionally brighten up a subject. Skies are a bit more blue, grass is a bit more green. It's like a more pleasant version of reality. Everything is just a bit less dour. Both are very good in HDR situations though. There's no oversaturation, plenty of detail packed in there. And fine detail in general is something that these phones are both great at capturing. And in low light, the night modes work really well. On both the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and the Pixel Fold, they can really help to brighten up your snap. It actually works faster on Samsung's phone, although once again, those tones aren't quite what you'd see with the naked eye. Similar sort of results again on the ultra wide angle shooter. And as far as the telephoto lens goes, you get a five times optical zoom on the Pixel. So it does produce sharper images when you zoom into around sort of 10 to 20 times level. Although Samsung's phone can crop in further to around the 30 times level compared with 20 times on the Pixel. For your video shenanigans, well, you can capture footage at up to 4K resolution at 30 or 60 FPS here on the Pixel Fold, whereas Samsung's foldable can boost that all the way up to 8K resolution at 30 FPS. Otherwise, yes, you can chuck that back down to those 4K Ultra HD levels at again 30 or 60 FPS. And I do prefer Samsung's smartphones when it comes to video capture compared with the Pixels. Maybe it's just because, again, those visuals are a bit brighter, a bit boppier. I just find my home footage always looks really good when it's shot on a Galaxy. As for the selfie cams on those front displays, well, it's a 10 megapixel effort here once again on the Galaxy Z Fold 5 versus 9.5 megapixels here on the Pixel Fold. And while that selfie camera will absolutely do the job for a quick bit of Instagramming or whatever else, you can flip the phones open like so and use those rear cameras to take a selfie as well if you can deal with the slightly awkward handling. As for the cameras which are hidden away inside of these foldables, well it's a mere 4 megapixel here on the Samsung Galaxy Z, boosted to an 8 megapixel here on the Pixel Fold. You can only record at full HD resolution video if that's your bag. And to be honest, despite the difference in the resolution, I think I slightly prefer the Z Fold 5's output. And it seems ever so slightly sort of foggy, a bit misty here on the Pixel, despite the fact that it's the Galaxy that has the under display camera. But of course, you shouldn't really be using that internal camera to take selfies or anything anyway. The best use for it is when you're Skyping, Zooming, something like that. You can just prop up the Z Fold 5 and just use it completely hands-free, chatting away with your family, mates, whatever. And that right there, in a lovely wee nutshell, is my unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 and a quick side-by-side -side with the Pixel Fold so you can see which one might be best for you. And I've got to say, personally, I am more swayed by the Galaxy Z Fold 5, even though it's not exactly much of an evolution compared with the previous generation, beyond the fact that it's a lot less gappy now. I do still prefer the squat cover screen of the Pixel Fold, but I think the Galaxy just handles split-screen multitasking and that larger internal display is so much nicer than the Pixel Fold does. But as I say, stay tuned for my in-depth Galaxy Z Fold 5 review. I'm using it as my full-time smartphone for a couple of weeks, not just kind of occasionally watching a video on it like some reviewers do. So be the first to see that, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Let me know what you think of the Z Fold 5 down in the comments below. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.